Hello everyone, it's Alina. Welcome to my Soap General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. At General Hospital, Laura's eyes overflowed with tears as she glanced at a portrait of Bobby on the memorial wall. She kissed the tips of her fingers and softly caressed the frame of Bobby's portrait, just as Spencer walked up. Overcome with passion, Laura held her grandson firmly. At Harborview Towers, Sam and Dant exited their apartment and joined a solemn-faced Sonny at the elevator. They exchanged modest greetings and boarded the elevator together. At Maxie's house, Maxie was getting James ready to help Cody out at the stables, when Felicia and Anna arrived to pick her up for Bobby's burial. Everyone was solemn as they exchanged hugs. Meanwhile, Jocelyn opened the door of her mother's home and received a grief-stricken Lucas, who explained that he had arrived in town just an hour earlier. After he exchanged hugs with both his niece and his nephew, Michael extended his condolences to his uncle. In the master bedroom, Carly sat at her vanity and glanced at a photograph of Bobby that had been shot during the nurse's ball. Carly's countenance filled with sadness, and her eyes welled up with tears as she laid the photos down and picked up a necklace to finish getting ready for her mother's burial. A little while later, Carly entered the living room, where Drew was waiting. Just then, Lucas, Michael, and Jocelyn arrived from the foyer, and Carly hurried up to embrace her brother with a hug. How are we going to do this? Carly asked. I don't know, but we will, Lucas said. When Carly's phone rang, Carly excused herself and answered it. It was Elizabeth. In Kelly's garden, Elizabeth was astonished when Carly walked up. Elizabeth carried two shattered pieces of Kelly's renowned sign as she recounted that the overnight storm had brought the sign down. Carly was brokenhearted since the hand-painted sign had been commissioned by Aunt Ruby decades previously. Elizabeth informed Carly she should not worry since Elizabeth will take care of everything. Carly was touched when Elizabeth offered to paint a new sign. Kelly's means so much to this community, just as Bobby did. Just as she always will, Elizabeth stated. Later, Carly arrived at All Saints Chapel, where Drew, Michael, Jocelyn, and Lucas were gathering in the entrance. She apologized for keeping everyone waiting, but Michael was more concerned about Carly and how she'd been holding up. I'm taking it minute by minute, she said. Lucas told her to take it second by second, if necessary. It was what he did. Grateful, she informed her brother that it was lovely to see him. Lucas grinned because it wasn't the first time that she'd had told him that. Everyone walked into the chapel, where a giant portrait of Bobby was displayed on an easel stand. White candles were lighted across the chapel as visitors began to trickle in. After Carly met Sunny, Dante, and Sam, Dante told Carly that he had always thought highly of her mother, since Bobby had been an incredible person. Sunny waited until Dante and Sam moved away to talk privately to Carly. He told her that he had adored Bobby and would miss her. When Laura arrived, both Carly and Lucas greeted her. Carly praised Laura for agreeing to give Bobby's eulogy, but Laura argued that Bobby had been like a sister to her. Nearby, Spencer and Trina gave Jocelyn their condolences. Trina hugged her friend, as Spencer acknowledged that Bobby had always been wonderful to him. Jocelyn agreed that her grandmother had been good to everyone, unless someone had gotten on Bobby's bad side. A little while later, Tracy approached Carly. Tracy became choked up with emotion as she admitted that Bobby had been a force to be reckoned with. Carly praised Tracy for being with Bobby when Bobby had flown to Amsterdam to settle Luke's affairs. Tracy stated that she had liked Bobby enormously because Bobby had been devoted to people she had loved, especially Luke. After Tracy went away, she spotted Lucy by the entryway. Tracy made a beeline for her, but Lucy informed Tracy that she had no intention of battling with Tracy. Tracy revealed that she had approached Lucy to suggest that they make a truce for the day out of respect for Bobby. Lucy agreed, and she noted that Bobby had been Luke's ride or die. Tracy agreed that the same had been true for Luke. Maxie, Felicia, and Anna entered the church and halted when they spotted a giant picture board with photos of Bobby's life. Felicia emotionally suggested that Bobby was with BJ and Tony. Maxie acknowledged that she had vivid recollections of her uncle Tony following the heart transplant, but she knew they couldn't be genuine because she'd been unconscious. When Maxie, Felicia, and Anna continued in, Maxie spotted a stranger among the crowd. The young woman was concentrating on her phone. 
Meanwhile, Willow met Michael and apologized for running late. Willow revealed that Monica had been under the weather, and it had taken some cajoling to get Monica to stay home. Nearby, Alexis lit a candle as she and Christina remembered Bobby and how Bobby had been a source of strength and support when Christina had been recovering from an abusive relationship with Kiefer Bauer. Alexis recalled a particular chat that she'd had with Bobby when Bobby had opened up about surviving both an abusive father and an abusive spouse. Elsewhere in the chapel, Laura checked on Scott, but he confessed that he had no idea what to say about Bobby when it was his turn to speak. After everyone took their places, Maxie observed the mystery woman sat at the back of the church. Maxie questioned if Anna recognized the woman, but Anna had no idea who the woman was. Anna reminded Maxie that Bobby had touched too many lives to count. Thus the woman might have been one of Bobby's patients. Moments later, everyone stood as Bobby's casket was carried to the front of the church by Lucas, Michael, Felix, Spencer, Kevin, and Drew. Carly's eyes filled with fresh tears as she watched. After the priest opened with a prayer, Laura stood to speak. Laura revealed that she and Bobby had been more than sisters-in-law, they'd been friends. Laura recalls Bobby always leading with her heart, being dependably cheerful, and having a gift for spotting the good in everyone. Scott was the next to speak, but he stated that he was at a loss for words. How do you memorialize someone as complicated as Bobby, he said. Scott reminded everyone of Bobby's diverse network of pals, which included an Aztec princess and fitness guru Richard Simmons. Scott talked of Bobby's kindness and generosity, and he confessed that he had only just understood that he and Bobby had been intended to be the best of friends, even though he had loved her. Elizabeth followed Scott, and she agreed that it hadn't been a secret that Bobby had grown up with a lot of tragedy, yet it had never crushed Bobby's spirit or held her back. Elizabeth said that Bobby had harnessed her past and turned it into power, wisdom, and healing since it was who Bobby was. She was a healer, Elizabeth added. Elizabeth noted that Bobby had supported her through many difficult times, and she had always been the first person to help, so Elizabeth wished to honor that legacy and make Bobby proud. Finally, Carly thanked everyone for attending her mother's burial. She choked back tears as she talked about her troubled relationship with Bobby and how she hadn't met her mother until she'd been an adult. Carly informed everyone that Bobby had been a good mother and that Bobby had mentored and understood Carly. Carly remarked about her mother's acceptance and thanked Bobby with teaching her to open her own heart. Carly revealed that she had been a disaster when she had first come in Port Charles. I was a schemer and not in a good place, Carly remarked. Carly stated that Bobby had been one of the two persons who had turned things around for Carly because her mother had had a capacity for forgiveness and acceptance. Carly realized that she and her mother had seemed different on the surface, but in actuality, they had been very much alike. I adore you, Bobby Jane Spencer. The world's a very different place without you, Carly finished. As people began to flow out of the church, Maxie approached the mystery woman to find out how she had known Bobby. The woman identified herself as Angela Brighton, a writer from AP who had been researching a story about Bobby. Meanwhile, Lucas paused to light a candle for his mother. Felix walked up to greet Lucas and express his sympathy. After they exchanged an embrace, Felix related his memories of Bobby from the nurse's ball. Felix recalled that Bobby had always looked on the positive side of everything, even when things had gone poorly. Touched, Lucas thanked Felix for sharing his memories. Nearby, Felicia told Carly that the service had been excellent. Carly thanked Felicia for attending and for having been a great friend to Bobby. As they talked, Maxie and Angela walked up. Maxie said that she had something vital to tell Carly. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.